Does the uh, employment board test change anything about your schedules and training and anything like that going forward for today up to lunch, or is there just uh, you continue on with your regular schedule? Yeah, I think it's pretty much as advertised, although we lost today, right? And so um, that's about it. Uh, you know, I think obviously a, a successful completion kind of puts a little more clarity into the rest of our training and, and you know, potentially a launch date, a real launch date, and those kinds of things. So. Uh, I think that's, those are all good things. But when do they start talk, talking to you guys about the launch? <laughs> they don't. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're just like us. <laughs> but, you know, really, our job is to be ready yeah, when the launch date ready. actually turns up, and so we'll do our, our best and be sure that we, we are ready and have done as much as we can for that date. And, you know, I, you heard earlier, I think, that there's questions about the duration and things like that, right. and uh, we'll be ready when they pick the date, and that will go into all the things that have to be ready. We're just one of those... Uh, one of those things, and we just try really hard not to be the longest. Would you prefer a longer duration? <laughs> we would prefer the right duration, both to take care of space station, but accomplish all the objectives that we need to to really set the future crews up to keep you know station taken care of the way that it needs to be taken care of. Thank Was you. it stressful um, watching today's launch? Um, you guys will be on board next time. Sure. And this is not something you want to happen in your flight. So how, how was it, you know, how closely were you monitoring your, you know, families? Well, I, I, our families were certainly watching from back home. Uh, obviously, they're keenly interested in, in those kinds of things. I mean, it was a, you know, you have a whole bunch of different things that go through your mind and you know, emotions that you experience during a launch. Obviously, this is a key one leading up to our launch, so I think that part of it is pretty exciting. Um, and you want it to go well, but you also want to, we wanted to go well because we did all the work we needed to do to get to this point, and the things worked the way they're supposed to. And so far, that that's the case. But you know, once we get the vehicle back, you know, it's on it's on board the ship now. It was on board the ship a, a little less than two hours after it landed in the water. So uh, that was pretty neat to see. And then you know, we'll see what the data shows and, and go from there. But it certainly is a it's a confidence builder from the standpoint of if you ever got into that situation. <coughs> Dragon can get us away from the booster question. Well, how much better is the Crew Dragon abort system from a cruise perspective than the space shuttle, where you have black zones or dead zones where you, you couldn't get to the landing site? Yeah, I think that uh, it's almost as if Dragon has kind of two vehicles when you get in it. Right? One that's going to take you into orbit, and you've got that Super Draco system to accomplish the escape if you need to accomplish the escape. So it's a completely separate system that allows that to get accomplished, and you know. Uh, on the shuttle, we kind of reuse the kind of the nominal systems in kind of off nominal ways to accomplish the transatlantic abort or the return to launch site. And so, uh, not having those black zones is really comforting, you know, from my perspective, to have the ability to get away if anything uh, uh, was going wrong. And, and on top of that, I think in addition to that escape system, we also have a much smaller rocket to deal with uh, just because of the size. And so, just safety long term should be should be much better than the shuttle program was. So when you were being shuttle, former shuttle astronauts and everything, when you practice the actual day of stuff back on Friday, mm -hmm. how did that differ? And how is that similar? Is it a more relaxed, like, like more <laughs> relaxed since you're not going out there and sitting on your backs for three hours? You know, you're, right. like, can you, can you talk a little bit about the differences between that process? I think, <clears throat> well, just as a, a kind of a review, shuttle was longer because of the same same kinds of situations. You know, you had the five-minute launch with, with Dragon. We have instant uh, But the difference was is that all the polling and all the checks that they needed to do for fueling happened after we got on board, and seven people took longer, all those things. But I think generically, it, it's pretty similar up until we get in the vehicle. Then once we're in the vehicle, we're, we're in there roughly two and a half hours prior to launch is, is, is the nominal timeline, and then they start fueling about 35 minutes prior to launch. So uh, that is obviously drastically different. We've never done that with a, with a, a human-rated vehicle where we fueled it after the crew's on board. So that'll, obviously that's a different experience. But generally the lead up, especially the rehearsal we did the other day, is it, it, very much similar to what we did for shuttle launches. It's just a little less on the back time, which is always appreciated. I guess I would describe it as it was really familiar, yeah, having gone through it before a couple of times for Space Shuttle, this you know, was executed in a very similar fashion. Same building, same room that we did it before. Yeah, crew quarters is exactly the same. A little bit different transportation, <laughs> <laughs> different transportation to the pad and from the yeah. pad, but uh, other than that, you know, the, it was really familiar, at least from my perspective. 
Where were you? Let's start over here, just kind of get it organized a little bit. Let's start over here. How are, this is really exciting for us. I've been hearing this happening for second. Thank you for doing this. This is such an exciting moment for all of us. We are on the ground feeling the excitement from the public. And I'm just wondering how you guys feel knowing that you're pioneering this new era of human space flight, going commercial, bringing it back to the U.S. What are your feelings around it? Well, it, it, yeah, it's it's certainly exciting, and you know, but keep in mind this is you know, somebody said it. Well, it's been said many times. Space flight's like the biggest team sport there is. So we are just the lucky ones that get to fly the spaceship. But there's so many people that have put years and years in the commercial crew program at NASA, at SpaceX, at Boeing. You know, it, it's a it's a huge effort to get us to this point from eight and a half years ago since we flew shuttle last. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I mean, it's 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 very humbling, certainly, and it's exciting. Uh, we also are trying to keep our focus on you know the technical matters, the operational matters. We try to get the vehicle ready to go so that when we fly it, everything goes the way it's supposed to. And then you know the the critical part is certifying the vehicle for future groups. You know the the turtles that just graduated. You know making it a, a great view for those guys. So and and the private citizen astronauts that we go to, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I think all that, all those options are, are on the board. Um, certainly not on our flight. At least that we haven't been told we're flying with somebody else. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but, it, but it is. It's, it's, it's a, yeah, it's to create a great that opportunity, opportunity, and I think that's the ultimate goal, is to create that opportunity for uh, more and more folks to have the opportunity that we've already had on space shuttles. and. Uh, uh, hopefully drag in CST 100 and, and more vehicles. I think the administrator said that earlier. You know, that's the ultimate goal is to increase that access opportunity. Um, uh, where were you exactly this morning and what were you able to see? The clouds getting away and did you see the capsule coming down? We were in firing room four, uh, same place that we were for the demo one launch, which is right over here in the launch control center at the, on uh, Kennedy, Kennedy side, so just kind of right across the road from where you guys are right now. We had access to pretty much all the telemetry and all the video that was available, and so we were able to see the capsule. They had a, an aircraft that was tracking the pad before liftoff, and then picked up the vehicle soon after, as it uh, was visible through the clouds by the moon being just so bright, and we're able to watch it pretty much through the entire flight profile and uh, watched it all the way to the point that it came on board the boat. So, Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut. Uh, hey, how's it going? So. Uh, not that you guys aren't as fast as a computer or anything, but what are your actual options as astronauts and as phenomenal pilots to actually control the vehicle? You know, especially how do you turn it board um, after that point? You know, assuming there's some off normal situation. But what are your options? What, what can you actually do with like the, the screens and the control systems? For this type of scenario, there there are several automated abort triggers. For this particular example, it was a loss of loss of thrust of the booster, and that, that was the trigger for this abort, this particular abort. There's several others. There's also a manual abort capability. We have an abort handle that sits right between us, and it's just a twist and pull uh, capability, and that, that is active from uh, a few minutes before the vehicle is fueled on the pad until we are safely in orbit. So, uh, it's a pretty unique capability. As far as hand flying the vehicle during ascent, we had some capability uh, with the shuttle, but we don't have that with this vehicle. So if it becomes a case of the vehicle is hard to control, then obviously either manually or automated, you would have overcome it. Hi, Laura Gush with The Verge. Um, so I'm curious to know what your lives are gonna be like for the next couple of months. How do you plan if you can't take any vacations or in the future? In a while. <laughs> we got a little bit of break for the holidays, yeah. and uh, I know that the, the SpaceX team did as well, and that was, I think, good for all of us to kind of go forward here. And you know, we are we are planning week to week just to best optimize where the best place to spend our time, whether it's here in Florida or out in Hawthorne or back in Houston. And I know decisions have to be made in terms of what our ISS, you know, space station responsibilities are going to be when we get there, and that will play into it as well. And so, you know, week to week, we just had a scheduling meeting after. Uh, the launch today uh, and after for the, the next two weeks was yeah. on the I think that, that uh, it wasn't even on work wasn't again. even on the boat yet. and that's when we <laughs> have a schedule discussion for what we're going to do next week so we'll we'll, uh, we'll travel cross country uh, at least once in the next week and uh, we'll go from there and our guest list was due on Friday. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> 
for those who have requested interviews with them. That's why I'm slow and get back to you. <laughs> Yeah, Stephen Clark from Spaceflight Now. Uh, can you talk about your roles on the DM2 mission? Um, would you be doing any manual flying, the docking, will it be automated, or a manual docking? And who's sort of commander and co-pilot? Yeah, we're, uh, our plan is to do some manual flying, uh, kind of in what we call the far field, and then closer to ISS. The, the normal plan um, is to do an automated docking. Ideally, it would be nice to test that capability, but I think we can get some really good data from flying a little farther away on the docking axis with the vehicle. So that, that is at least the plan going in, and there's some constraints with fuel and those kinds of things. Uh, and then for the, for the mission, I'm the vehicle commander, and Bob's the vehicle pilot. Okay. Over here? Yes, sorry. Okay, so famously in the right stuff, you know, there's a conflict between um, maybe engineers and uh, astronauts who want to more hand fly the vehicle, just sort of following on from these other questions about the amount of control that you guys have. Um, really, how do you feel about that? Are you, are you comfortable um, with the amount of control you have with the vehicle? I mean, having no, no sort of black zones and being able to abort any time must you know, alleviate that a little bit. I think we're comfortable with where we are on this vehicle, and, and part of that has to do with the mission that's in front of us. And so if you lay out the mission very specifically, and then you put the tools in place to protect you, and I, and I think our posture pretty much is that we have a pathway home in all circumstances. We don't necessarily have a pathway to save the mission in all circumstances, and so that's the posture that we're in. That's a little bit easier when the mission is really well defined, like launch and dock to space station. If you make the mission much more complicated than that, what capabilities you need to have to, to stay safe. It's a little bit harder, for example, if you're trying to accomplish a, a landing on the moon, you don't necessarily, the, the path home might be all that manual capability. It might be the same as continuing as it is to uh, uh, kind of go backwards, if you will. And so in our case, we tend to have the capability to go backwards to, to, to do something safe, but not necessarily save the mission. And, but I definitely appreciate the more complex the mission is, the more capability you really need to, you know, to make sure you do have those safety outs. So as is right now, because it's essentially to and from the ISS, Mission is well defined, and we have a safe path out of all of the situations that we're in, which is what our what our design criteria is. If you make the mission more complex, you need more capability, which rapidly gets you into a case of just give it to you, give us everything. So, all right, these guys have been up for a little while, so um, we'll take just this one last question. I am Jim Siegel. I'm with uh, NASA Tech, and I'm, I was curious as to whether uh, you have been uh, practicing specific tasks that you might be doing up at the International Space Station? Have you been given certain investigations to help with or? So far on Space Station, our responsibility is to take care of ourselves while we're there, not make a mess. From a hygiene perspective, and, uh, uh, but we don't have payload responsibilities on board ISS uh, at this time. We haven't done training for that. We've done a little bit of preparation uh, um, just in case some of the really long lead items. So uh, I've done some EMU glove fit checks because that hardware has to fly and it has a long pathway to space station, but I haven't done the training associated with that hardware just yet. And so those decisions still, still have to be made. Yeah, we'll have, you know, Bob's primary long lead item responsibility for as a station crew member would be EVA and mine would be robotics. And then, you know, just the normal ISS living stuff, we've done some of that over the last year and a half or two years, but you know, if the if the duration changes significantly, then there would be more added on and some maintenance classes and then some payload classes and those kinds of things. Just so you know, we're there as 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 Bob said as a help for you know potentially just Chris and his two Russian crewmates if we if we get up there at that point. Some sometime I think it becomes a three person crew sometime in mid April. So you know that's kind of where they want us to at least be there to be helpful. Thank you. Yes, okay, thanks so much, y'all. Thank, we'll thank you guys again.